Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use configuration files to save and load game data. If you wanna follow along, there'll be a link in the description to a GitHub repository where you can pull down this project. So the first thing I wanna do is point out kind of the way I've got the project set up. There are two scenes. This main game scene that contains the background display and buttons that you see here, and then the save system. The only thing the save system has right now is a script with these two functions that we'll use to implement the save system. Looking at the game visually, hopefully it's fairly straightforward what's going on. We've got this value here that'll start at zero. We're going to be able to hit the plus button to increment, the subtract button to decrement. Then we'll be able to save a value, change it, and load our previously saved value back. In order to use the save system globally, which is an important distinction, we'll need to auto load this scene. The reason I point out about using it globally is that in a smaller project like this, it would be pretty simple to add the save system to our existing child structure, but I don't think that's very representative of what actual larger projects will look like. In general, your save system will be separate and you'll need to be able to access it from anywhere. If we go to project, project settings, auto load, click on this little folder and find save system, the script associated with our node, we can open it up and hit add over here on the right side. And now we're auto loading that scene or that script as a singleton and it's available globally. It's a little hard to see the benefits of that in a project as small as this, but hopefully that makes sense. And if you pull down the project and play around with it, you'll kind of see the power of that as you add things. So if I, I should be able to run it now that I've added that. If we hit the plus button, that goes up, that goes down. The only reason I needed to auto load the save system first in order for the project to work is because the save system script is where I'm storing the display value. So if we go back into the script, We've got this save value function, load value function. This is actually where we're going to be interacting with the configuration file. In order to do that, first thing we need to do is define where the configuration file is or where the configuration file is going to be created. So I'm going to say var save path equals res save file.cfg. So we have the path to the file. That's pretty straightforward. Now we need a config object to say config. I always end up spelling it congif for some reason, and I don't think that will work. Config file.new. And now that we have a config object, we need to actually load the file into that object. So our load response equals config.load save path. Okay. Load response. The reason I have load response set up there is because config.load is actually returning either okay or error depending on the status of loading that file. We're not going to worry about that too much right now, but if you throw in a print statement, you'll be able to see that hopefully we're getting okay as the response. We'll take a look at that in future videos with more complex save systems. So now we're going to dive into the save value function. The first thing we're going to do is define the actual config methods, and then you'll see it'll kind of make sense what parameters we need to pass into this function. Config.set value. So you'll see, see this kind of pop up section key value. The section is kind of the, the area or a group of things that we're saving this key to, and then the value is associated with that key. You'll get a pretty good visual of what that looks like once we actually save. So we're gonna say values for the section, for the key, we're gonna say, that can be anything you want, value one. And then the value that we want to save is whatever the current display value is. So we're gonna hit save, and then we can access the display value because we're also storing that in the save system. So that's what we're gonna want to save. 
So we need to make these available as arguments to this function. So section key value. But in this case, we can leave value as, actually we don't need the value because we're just saving here. So save value section key, and then we'll just change these to those parameters. I just wanted to show you kind of what that function looks like so that you'll be able to associate that later when we take a look at the configuration file. The load value function is mostly the same. We're gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. This doesn't do anything until we actually save the config file because we could make more than one edit before saving. So config.save, save path. Okay, so I think that's everything for the save value, but we won't be able to validate that until we implement the load value. So config dot get value, and it's gonna be kind of the same thing, section key. The only difference here is that the third argument is gonna be default. The default's whatever is gonna be returned if the value doesn't exist or there's an error getting it. So we can define, really I think in situations like this, the default should probably be whatever the display value currently is, that way if something goes wrong or the value doesn't exist, then we don't see anything change. We don't really want it to revert back to zero necessarily. So, or you could do that. That's kind of up to you. Section key, and we'll say display value as the default. And hopefully that will work. And then we have to add these as arguments, section and key. So we're getting the value from the configuration file, but we're not doing anything with it currently. The only thing we should have to do is set display value to whatever's returned. And I think if I haven't missed anything, we should be able to, oh, I did miss something. So we've got, we've got this set up. We've got the save function, load value. And if you're pretty familiar with how functions and button signals work, then this is probably all you need to implement into your own projects. But we need to hop over to game, go into the game script which we were already in, I don't know why I clicked on that. Save press, load press. So these are the signals for those buttons. So we actually need to call the save system. Node. Since it's auto loaded, it'll be in that kind of custom path, root, save system. And we should see it pop up, save value. Now we need to pass in the section. And I think we said we wanted to do values and value one those two arguments and then we'll basically do the same thing for load, load value oops values value one okay I think that that is all that we need so let's run it and we'll figure out if something's wrong so I'm going to go up to 10, I'm going to hit save, I'm going to go down to negative 5, and when I hit load, the value bumps back up to 10. So we saved 10, and we're loading that back into the project. So I'm going to pull over the configuration file that we actually created, and you can see kind of the structure. Let me actually set this up where you can see it with the, the save. Values here in the configuration file is the section, value one is the key, 10 is the value. So I actually don't, I, can you see this update live? I don't even know. We'll go to five, we'll save. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we can actually see it update. So five, we'll hit save at one, it goes to one, go up to five, load. The reason that there are sections and the reason we can define values is because obviously you could have more keys in this section. In a larger project, which hopefully we'll have a video on in the future, you could have things split up by, here's a section on the player data, and here's a section on enemy data, here's a section per level, however you want to set it up. There's some really complex things you can do with configuration files, but they're really easy to get into. And the way that these functions are set up, you can actually iterate through your save objects. So you don't have to do all this kind of all you, what am I trying to say? You don't have to save things individually with focus. You can create a larger object to constantly update as your save object. 
and then iterate through that object to save. Like I said, we'll take a look at that in a future video, although you can probably figure it out, figure it out on your own. I'd encourage you to do that. This project is a great starting point. If you learned something or just enjoyed the video, remember to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. I'm enjoying making these videos. This is my second one so far on this channel. I've got a lot of ideas for ones in the future, but I want to make sure that I'm creating content in a way that people understand. I want these example projects to be useful that I've put up in GitHub. And I want to make sure that it's a resource that people can come back to and that just makes sense before I start diving into some larger projects. So let me know what you think. I'd really appreciate hearing from you guys. If you watch this video, I can't thank you enough. I'm really excited about it. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching.